to my dad. Clucking. Like a chicken. This log building is a modern reconstruction of a typical dwelling. God, is that you? Families on plantations in this area. Homes like these featuring dirt floors and wooden chimneys were inexpensive to construct. I'm not bored. Michael's bored because we're at a museum and we've stopped for a moment. Dad's talking to the attendant down there. And I don't know what to say now. They said you can't video record inside there. But you know what? We're not inside there. So, sticking it to the man right here. Sticking it to Technicalities. Yeah. Yeah, I'm recording inside there right now. You can't what now? Inside the exhibit. There. Take that, museum. Here comes Dad. Oh, nope, he's going back for more. <laughs> going back for more. It's hard to leave when you can't find the door. There's like some kind of weird powwow Indian camp circle over there. Swamp. I think swamp. Maybe I'm just conditioned to think that any low area with trees around it is swamp because I live like in South Carolina. Arbitrarily. <laughs> film, film your own face too. If you're no. I, no. I don't want my face on camera. The government will steal it with those uh, weird cell phone towers that I read about that just intercept your calls. No, they're, it's a real thing. Raising awareness for it. Dueling, dueling recordings. <laughs> so where are we, Michael? The Pampers Historical whatever. <laughs> the Diaper Museum. Whatever. Pamplin. Pamplin. Historical, it's a... It's a All uh, I know is that there's stuff... Over there, that we could be seeing that we're not seeing because somebody's taking forever, and now we've got three, <laughs> three cameras going, three recording. So, we're at the Civil War Museum. It's a uh, museum of the Civil War soldier. Uh, really cool exhibit. I like the uh, the one that Michael get, said gave him PTSD. No, I didn't say it gave me PTSD. Oh, I said. Okay. If you had PTSD and were trying to avoid it, they didn't do a good job of letting you avoid it. Because even if you took the little hallway to, to go around it, you'd, you still heard the whole thing. You still heard the puffs of air coming at you and the gunshots and everything. The rumbling. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, I mean, it was cool. I liked it. But I think that was saying, the coolest part of the whole exhibit. I don't know. I just, I liked all the stuff. It was very cool to see the material. Soldier camp life. Two o'clock to two twenty. What's that? Like a reenactment, or? Um, I think it's just like they probably have reenactors that are there during that time that you know talk to you about what they they're doing and what you know what it was like living in the camp. And then again at two thirty here, they do the um, rifle loading exhibition again. That's pretty cool. And I got a brochure for the remembrance wall there. Did you see all the plaques on the wall? Yeah. You can have a Civil War soldier's name put on the wall. For how much money? I don't know, but I'm going to do it. For who? For George Ferguson. W. Ferguson. Huh? died here. He might as well have his name somewhere. <laughs> he died here? I, not he at died the Battle of Petersburg. Oh, did he? Yes. He's probably buried at, what's it, uh, the Mass Grave. Poplar, Poplar Grove Cemetery. Which, I Poplar mean, Grove so Mass many, Grave. Yeah, it was a, they were mass graves. They didn't have, uh, you know, soldiers. They didn't know who they were. He died in the hospital. That's one of our sepsis. 
That's blood poisoning. One of the ancestors of mom's side, right? Yeah, her, her great great uh, great <laughs> grandfather. For for people who don't know us, or great great grand, it's great great grandfather. It's her grand. See, what they don't like to admit is that we've got a family stump, so it probably was on Dad's side, actually. Michael. So, so that's Mark's precious tobacco. I, I must have it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You'll get cancer. Mark's putting on a little act for you. And there's a period electrical substation. Hey, hey, come over here, it's okay. Bah. Bah. Got horns on that one. Look at the balls on that ram. Surrounded by ladies, that guy's living the dream. What's the guided tour saying about this one, Michael? I don't know. There's no, uh, there's no number for it. I don't think so. No? Try to give it a couple tries. Instead of, instead of the pump going down, the mechanism is coming out. Just work it, Michael. For posterity. Hopefully we can uh, check out this battlefield before it rains. It's looking pretty overcast over here, but better lighting. Yeah. So we're checking out like this replica camp, Confederate camp, the breakthrough trail area from the Battle of Petersburg in Virginia. That's our way over to the battlefield area there. So these are the fortifications and stuff that you'd see on these old battlefields. A lot of people died in these woods and the fields around it. Nobody there. The, the city was empty. I mean, it was like like one of those movies about you know after the apocalypse. And, you or know, an episode of the Twilight. Zone. Yeah, an empty city. You know, no no people alive in the city. No cars. No nothing. I mean, it was just like empty. We're like, I mean, everything was closed. That's, that, there are parts of New York that are like that. That are just like. Um, I can't remember where it was, but there was a part that was just like it was it was next to a major thoroughfare. It was like on, on another road, but and there was no one there. Like it was just us really. No, there there was that couple that came down the street and was arguing very loudly. <laughs> well, what uh, what we finally saw was, you know, we were, we got in the World Trade Center and it was closed. We couldn't go up to the observation deck or anything, and uh, so we started walking away. And these people, these people. Came around the corner out there, and, and it was a couple of ladies and, and young girls, and they started calling out to us, "Hey, hey, hey, hey!" And we stopped. And they came up and said, "I just want to tell you, your bedroll's loose." And my bedroll had come untied on one end. It was it had shifted. It was about I was about to lose it, and I didn't realize it. And they they turned us out, and I'm sitting here going, "Not exactly what we've been told about New York City, you know." Now everybody's out to get you. <laughs> what you'll find is that the locals, the people that are from New York, are really helpful. They ask for directions, they'll tell you exactly where you need to go, exactly what way to take. The people that aren't from there are where the trouble is coming. Well, we They're had, the rude people. When we were on the subway, we were trying to find, trying to figure out how to get to Battery Park. We wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. We didn't want to go out to it, we just wanted to see it. Couldn't figure out how to get to Battery Park. We're standing there looking at the 
looking at a map, feeling completely lost, and this guy comes walking by. He's wearing a three-piece suit, carrying a leather briefcase. <coughs> and he walks past us and just glanced at us as he walked past, and he got about 20 or 30 feet past us, and he just stopped for about two seconds. And then turned around and walked over to us and said, okay, where are you trying to go? We said, well, we're trying to get to uh, Battery Park. And he said, all right, you take such and such train until you get to this yeah. this stop. And then you get off there and you take this train. And you take you know, you take that so-and-so and then you change trains there to this train. And that will take you to Battery Park. He said, and whatever you do, do not get off the train at any other stop in between here and here. And we said, why? And he said, because they'll never find you. <laughs> Said, okay, <laughs> and that was one word. Kurt told me this train pulls up and goes, "This is our train." I said, "No, this isn't our train, Kurt." He said, "This is number six train. This is the number three train. No, this is the train. I said, this isn't it, Kurt? This is the train. The doors are open. Get ready to close the thing off." And he steps onto the train, looks at me. I said, "I got on the car." Doors closed. We're going along, and he's looking at the map. Wino comes up to him and goes, "Give me a dollar. I'll tell you where you need to get off." <laughs> I said, "Go away, go away." He kept looking at it. And after a little while, he said, "You know what? I think we're on the wrong train." And of course, my response was, "You yes. think?" <laughs> when when I was there, the Winos made speeches. They got on and started, like, they had a long spiel, and they would, like, you know, they would, like, orate to you this sob story of why you should give them $20. Some beautiful country out here. And, uh, we're on 360 in Virginia. Heading westwardish towards Louisville, Kentucky. Just wait till we get into Pennsylvania. You'll really feel like you're in the South. <laughs> it's the same. It's indistinguishable. Alright, is the lighting okay? No. Did you see anything? No. What now? Yeah. Okay. Is it rolling? Yeah. Good. Okay, so we are on our way to Kentucky. Temporary? What? It's a long road to Tipperary. Yes. But we're on our way to Kentucky, to Louisville, uh, taking a little bit of a detour. Uh, we were actually planning to go to D.C., but we changed our plans a little bit. We're heading out to Louisville to see a friend of Mike's, and then we're going to be heading back into Virginia, probably see, like, Appomattox, stuff like that, then go up to D.C., and then continue on up. Northward, so we're taking a, a roughly thousand mile round trip detour, but I think it'll be worth it. And I'm looking forward to this drive. We're supposed to arrive at five o'clock in the morning, it's eight o'clock now, p.m. So, yeah, but uh, that's actually it for this, this video. I um, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting a video for tomorrow. But until next time. Keep checking out the website on the road to reality.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Mark Jones Audio and Mike's on Twitter too. It's at Michael 